our first thing, a way of working out case A. Case A, remember, was where we just do the simplest thing possible and just plug it in. Now, I, as I said before, that trick works when you have a polynomial, so like this one, for example. And we can actually go further by using the limit laws and show that, yes, just plugging it in is really what it amounts to. And it usually works out that you get a limit, you are able to evaluate a limit that way, and it works out under the most rigorous cases, so, you know, for polynomials. Um, so, uh, using the limit laws then, we have the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed, and that means we have the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed, like that. We can just rewrite it like that. And that's using uh, the constant you know, limit of some some uh, number x raised to a raised to a power is the limit of x uh, with the whole limit being raised to a power plus three times the limit as x approaches two again of x all squared same same rule just repeat it again minus the limit as x approaches two of a constant of one and this equals this equals well let's see the limit as x approaches 2 of x well the limit as x approaches any number of x is the is just a matter of doing a simple substitution of that number and so we end up with just 2 cubed so that number is 8 what about here we have the limit as x approaches 2 of x Okay, so that's a direct substitution again. And so this limit becomes 2. When we square that, we get 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And the limit of a constant is just the constant. So the limit as x approaches 2 of 1 is 1. And we're subtracting, so we subtract 1. We end up with 20 minus 1. And our limit is 19 in this case. All right, let's go to the next bit, the next example. And that's where we have a, a fraction to reckon with. And this is the limit of a quotient. Now you remember me saying in class that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits provided the limits exist. Almost like a rap tune, the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits. So therefore we have the limit as x approaches three of one divided by the limit as x approaches 3 of x minus 3, okay? And then this is equal to the limit of a constant, is just the constant, so doesn't matter what the limit is approaching. The limit of a constant is just the constant, it's 1. On the bottom we have the limit as x approaches 3 of x, which is just 3, right? You just do a direct substitution. In fact, if you like, I can distribute this, the limit as x approaches 3 of x minus the limit as x approaches 3 of 3 becomes what? This becomes 3 and that stays 3. So 1 over 3 minus 3 is 1 over 0. Well this is the case of a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 uh, for this function. And you can check that out on a graphing calculator or maybe maybe make a graph yourself by hand using a table of values and see what happens as x gets super close to 3, approaching from the left and approaching from the right um, using, using that sort of analysis. Our third case happens to be this idea where you have, well, what was our third case? So we just covered a, th a case where we had to reckon with a vertical asymptote and we got this result and we check using we would check the result using a graph. Remember this result here, 1 over 0 is undefined. So you check using a graph and usually that usually when you see this you have a vertical asymptote. Over here an indeterminate form is where you get a result which is 0 over 0.
it's, it's every bit as undefined as the vertical asymptote case. Uh, remember, this is not infinity. Some people mistake this for infinity, but it isn't. And certainly this cannot be mistaken for infinity, but at the same time, it doesn't really evaluate to any number known to man. Uh, so, um, the limit as x approaches a of f of x is 0 over 0. Now, usually you get 0 over 0 when you have a rational function that has a common factor, okay? So you have a rational function with a common factor. And that means that the indeterminate form of 0 over 0 takes a bit more work because it might still be possible to evaluate the limit. Just what is uh, sure, though, is that you cannot plug in a and expect a result for this case. You can't just plug in a because this is what you're going to get. You're going to get 0 over 0. But if you either use values close to a and super duper close to a, you might get something unexpected. In fact, it might actually approach a definite value. And even better, you can also use cancellation um, of a common factor to see that it might actually uh, evaluate to an actual number. So indeterminate forms take a bit more work. These usually, you, these usually are the ones that I um, give to people in grade 12 calculus. Okay, so here we're finding the limit of x squared minus 2x minus 15 divided by x squared minus 25. The limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits provided the limits exist. So, all right, that means that we can take the limit of the top and the limit of the bottom, but I'm going to save time. I, I'm not going to do all these steps like I did up here. I'm just going to drill down to the individual terms. The limit of the limit as x approaches 5 of x squared is, you remember, a direct substitution is just 5 squared. So we can say it's 25, subtract, let's see, 2 times 5, well that's 10, and subtract 15. It looks like we're going to get 0 there on top. And let's see what we get on the bottom. Mm. Okay, 5, 5 squared is 25. And we're subtracting uh, 25. 25 minus 25 is zero. Looks like this is this is one of these cases where we have an indeterminate form of zero over zero. Now there are two ways of evaluating this limit. One is using a calculus method called L'Hopital's rule. Um, but in most cases in grade 12 calculus. Um, especially for cases like this, you can just use algebra. And if you like, you can actually, well, let's just follow the algebra and see where it takes us. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 5. And let's, let's factor the top. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Let's factor the top of the fraction. We get, hmm, x times x. And what's the second term? I need two numbers that make 15 when multiplied but add to minus 2 or well, make minus 15. So let's say negative 5 and positive 3. 5 and 3, negative 5 and 3, minus 15. Negative 5x plus 3x, we get negative 2. So good. The bottom is a lot easier to reckon with. It's the difference of squares. So that's x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 5. And looky here, you got a common factor x minus 5 on the top and on the bottom, and they can cross out. Now for the math purists among you, we really do have to remind ourselves that in order to maintain the e equality of these two expressions, we have to respect the domain of this expression that could not evaluate at x equals 5. So that means we have to provide that x is not equal to 5. Now, does that bother us? I mean, I have here a limit as x approaches 5 of x plus 3. This is what's left over x plus 5. And does it bother me that I cannot evaluate or I cannot use x does not equal to 5? If we plugged it into this expression, like we said, it would blow up. We would get 0 over 0. 
Now, if we plugged it into this expression, we probably would get the number that is the location of the hole in the graph, which is the number we want. So let's do it. Let's evaluate it. Let's evaluate it as though this restriction didn't matter. Okay, so then limit as x approaches 5 of x plus the limit as x approaches 5 of 3, all divided by the limit as x approaches 5 of x plus the limit as x approaches 5 of 5. So then you get, okay, that, that becomes 5. We get 5 plus 3, that's 8, divided by 5 plus 5, which is 10. Uh, well, 8 tenths, or if you like, 4 fifths. That's uh, what that evaluates to, or 0 0.8 if you're using your calculator. And this is one example of evaluating limits uh, where you get a case of 0 over 0. And uh, this, is, this is only true for limits. I mean, you would never get away with this if, this was, if you were just plotting the graph. Uh, I mean, the graph of this is not the graph of this because of that one point at x equals 5. But here, we're not trying to plot the graph here. We're just trying to evaluate what the limit would have been because it certainly seems that as you approach 5 from the left and 5 from the right, you are getting close to some number. You seem to be getting close to 4 over 5. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if you could just plug in the number directly and get that number uh, in all its accuracy?